Hi guys, I'm back. <laughs> so I know that you can see right now on my screen what we're gonna discuss for the entire week. Um, however, let's have a recap of what we have learned and also what we previously discussed. Okay, first, I know that you have learned how to initiate projects. Second, I know that you have learned how to collect um, data requirements, although I'm pretty sure that um, this is a challenging time for all of us because of the restriction to mobility, um, data gathering, and also face-to-face um, -face communication. I also believe that some of you here um, have a problem with the clients because the clients um, um, rejected um, or declined your um, your software um, your software solutions right but nonetheless I hope that um, I, I, nonetheless it has compelled you to become a uh, creative and to be able to elicit data about your projects environments from your potential end users I know because of that um, because of that challenges um, you become more resilient as a team and also as a future um, software engineer I hope that your experience has taught you the quirks of requirements gathering to better prepare you for the future projects. And lastly, I know that I helped you use um, some modeling tools to represent the user requirements um, such as um, the UML tools and also the structured analysis tools. Now, the tools actually help verify whether our understanding of the requirements um, are correct or not. That's why uh, I believe that I also dis I also repeatedly informed you or told you in my previous video lectures that it's really good or it's actually the best if you keep your stakeholders um, involved and let your stakeholders verify if um, verify the models that you have gathered check or verify if what you have understood is correct or not again we are making sure that we have a very good um, uh, we have a consistent data here okay so on the other hand the models that we had created in the requirements analysis are used as a basis for the software projects design this is what is, uh, this is what is good about modeling while they are used to summarize or, rep or represent the requirements using single notations or constructs, they are actually a representations of elements that can be used as a basis for the software solutions design. Okay, in a traditional software development setup, um, the systems uh, analysts or basically um, the software engineers collects all these requirements and models them um, and then develop um, the design of the software solutions okay these design artifacts also known as specifications or specs okay specs are the documents handed over to the software developers okay more conventionally these anal uh, these analysts or those system analysts and also the developers roles are already um, Im imbibed in the software engineers in a cross-functional software development team so the process employed might be different but the core software engineering practices are still employed okay because there are some ways or there are some process uh, or there are some methods that they can use however again the core of the software engineering practices are still there okay so right now um, we need to talk about this one okay um, the software engineer follows the design created for the software okay the design is based on the analysis models that were that were created during the modeling phase. This goes to say that the design of the software is still anchored or uh, is still anchored on the user requirements, right? The design creates 
a representation or a model of a software that is unlike requirements model because the design model provides software architecture, data architecture, or sorry, data structure, um, the interfaces, also the components that are necessary to implement the system. Okay, so for prescription or for for prescriptive or what we call traditional software development, the design should follow after the modeling phase. However, um, it, in most software industries, um, if they will use an agile process model, actually the design can begin at the initiation part or the initiation of the project and is iteratively elaborated throughout the software development. Okay, again, the goal of design is to build a stable software solution that will not fail when small changes are introduced to its design. You need to think about that one. Okay, you need to take note about that one, sorry, because that is actually our goal. Okay. So the overall goal of design is to produce a software representation that exhibits firmness. So if we will talk about firmness, um, meaning um, a stable software solution that will not fail when small changes are introduced to its design. That's the overall goal earlier. That's, I, I believe that's what I said. Okay, that's actually firmness. Next, we also have commodity meaning all the needed functionality are included in the design and lastly we also have what we call delight okay meaning uh, we motivate the users to use the software later with satisfaction okay software engineers by the way class can achieve this by practicing um, diversification and also the convergence Okay, if we will talk about, oh, one moment, if we will talk about diversification, this is actually an acquisition of a repertoire of alternatives, basically the raw material of design like components, component solutions, and also the knowledge, all contained in a catalog or in a documentation, um, textbooks, and also user experience right once this diverse set of information is assembled you must choose elements from the repertoire that meet the requirements defined by requirements engineering and the analysis model that is actually called as divergence okay sorry convergence so if we will talk about convergence um, as this of course Alternatives are considered and rejected. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry for that one. So again, as this of course, alternatives and are considered and rejected, and you converge on one particular configuration of components and thus the creation of the final product. So the configuration of components pertains to four different types of design model that we're gonna discuss in our in our succeeding um, slides. Okay, this is actually done in iterations until the final design or product is created. I believe that um, if we will talk about the iterative um, style of developing a design. We, I already introduced this one in the uh, what we call an iterative process model where the developer keeps on asking um, design concepts from the end user itself. Okay? And also, um, just like what I said earlier, the software engineer follows the design created for the software. Okay? For our next topic, or for our next slides, um, actually, for the next slides, uh, we will talk about these four, okay?